All right, so so we're right in the middle of talking about the retina, and I'm gonna I'm on actually slide 16. We're we're really starting with slide 17, but I want to just restate something so that before we move on. So when you look at this, we had said light comes in here, and it's going to stimulate one of these photoreceptors, and we had said, how, where does it have to go? It has to go to your occipital lobe, right, of your brain. So the receptor sends a signal through the bipolar neuron to a ganglion, and then the signal goes over and out through the optic nerve. So, so what we have is the receptor, the rods and cones, are connected to the bipolar neuron layer, so now, I just flipped the slide to 17, the bipolar cell layer, and then we had said those bipolar cells will send a signal to the ganglion, and it'll go to your brain, and your brain will say, well, I perceive, I perceive this action potential, this sensation, as vision. Now, it ends up that every, that the cone cells, the ones that give you that visual acuity so that you can read and see things in great detail, you have a, what we call a one-to-one -one ratio there. And what that means is for every cone cell, you have one bipolar neuron that sends the signal through the ganglion to your occipital lobe. Well, and so that way you can you can see in great detail. Now, I said you can't read very well. If you're in the dark, you can, really can't read. And the, one of the reasons for that, and I said I'd talk about it later, was because for every rod cell, I mean, or for every bipolar neuron connected to rod cells, there are from six to 600 receptors you know, light and dark receptors communicating with it. So if you think of it, how do you, how does a TV work? You get pixels, right? And you, when you put all those little spots of light together, you say, wow, that's a puppy dog, right? You, you have an image. Um, but if you have signals coming in from, you know, to the single neuron that's going to your brain, from either six of those locations or 600, it's blurry. It's, it makes for a blurry image. So that's why, that's one of the main reasons why the rod cells, you can't see detail very well with them, but they're very good at seeing in low light conditions it's because they have six to 600 six to 600 rod cells synapse with every single bipolar cell. And in contrast, each, each of the cone cells has its own bipolar neuron. And so that's what gives you the detail that you need to be able to see, see really well. Okay, let's keep on keeping on. Okay, the interior of the eye, I don't know why this seems to be out of, out of uh, sequence, but we had already mentioned it. We had said in the anterior cavity, this area right here, we have the liquidy, watery substance called the aqua, aqueous humor. And then all of this in the back, behind the lens, we have the posterior cavity, and it's filled with a gel. And this gel, it's, it's not like the aqueous humor. We said the aqueous humor is being produced throughout life, and sometimes you produce too much of it, and so you have a pressure in your eye, glaucoma. Well, no, the vitreous humor, you got that when you were an embryo, and that's what you're stuck with is the vitreous humor that you produced as a fetus, as an embryo. And so, and what is its purpose for? It's to hold the retina in place that's just laying in the posterior cavity. Okay. So, I'm moving on to 19. We had already said that, but it's always good to, 
to refresh our memories. So on slide number 17, 19, 19, sorry, um, we're going to talk about the photoreceptors. We had said what they do, and most of this work has been done with rods um, and the absorption of light. But what they do is they absorb light energy. And how do you they absorb light energy. And the question is, how do you absorb light energy? Well, you absorb light energy with a chemical, right? So you have a chemical chemical that is going to respond. Uh, if you're in, if you've taken a biology class, you know that in photosynthesis, that's what plants do, you have light hits, hits a pigment and um, the energy is captured by an electron. So something like that is happening here with the photopigment. And what the pigment does is it's, it's a chemical. In the case of the eye, we're going to talk about something called rhodopsin. This is what's in rods. And that chemical can be bent like this, or it can be straight. And bent or straight. Bent or straight. And so what we talk, and it depends on whether they've been hit by light. Um, and so what this, what this is, is this is what, um, this is how we say the photopigments absorb light and undergo a change in structure. Absorb light and undergo a change in structure. That means bent straight, bent straight. Yeah. So, so that's what is going on um, when we talk about this, this business of rhodopsin, this, this chemical. And the two different forms of it are the, the cis form. You see that has a bend in it. And then here is the trans form. That's the straight version of it. So, so we're on slide number, number um, 20. Um, so in the cis form, um, we're go it's going to be bent, and this is when you are in the dark. So, so what we're going to do is um, we have these terms. We say dim light causes the, the, the split and recombination. Um, and, and this is re what we're really talking about is this change in shape. And the problem that you run into, and again, this is with, um, they, most of this study has been done with rods. And we said, what are they all about? Seeing in dim, in dim light. So the rods, it takes 40 minutes for them to get over the, if the, when they're being in really bright light. So in the Navy or, you know, um, places where you have to be able to see at night, they'll put on red glasses to, to try and, before they go out, to try and increase their night vision. So, so I'm going to go, we had said that we have the two different forms, and I showed you the picture on slide 21, but well, let's go on and let's look at Slide 22. This is where the magic is. Okay, slide 22. Um, so we have the cis form, that bent form. And so it, what happens, light comes in and hits the, the cis form. And what does it cause it to do? It causes it to go straight. Now, and that's what's going to cause vision. That didn't explain anything, I know. So when, when you are in the cis form, it ends up that rod cell is secreting a, a neurotransmitter substance, glutamate. And in this case, the glutamate is going to be inhibiting the signal from being sent by the bipolar neuron. So remember, we have the photoreceptor, bipolar neuron, and then the ganglion, which carries it to your occipital lobe through the optic nerve, right? And so in the absence of light, glutamate is inhibiting the signal. In the presence of light, when, when, the, neuro when the rhodopsin 
goes to the trans state, you remove the inhibition and you say, ah, I see light. You get a signal to your brain saying you have light. Okay, that is how it works. And it works that same way with the cone cells, but they have a different, a slightly different photo uh, receptor chemicals involved. Um, I'll have to come back and start on the next slide um, here in, in just a little bit. I've got a meeting I've got to get ready for. We're going to come back and start with slide number 23 of, holy crap, crap uh, 39. <laughs> so we got a long ways to go, but we are going to keep chipping away at it. Don't you worry your pretty little head, none. All right, we'll be right back.